Welcome back to a new week here at Life of the Bridges. If you didn't see our last video where myself and Katie went off grid for a couple of days to get a bit of R&R &R, and it was absolutely amazing and it's certainly something that we see very strongly in our future. That sort of lifestyle, that slower pace living is... Uh suits us down to the ground after everything we've been through so if you didn't see it i'll pop a link above click that to watch that video up this week i am hopefully going to be taking you guys through what it's like to have an ng tube as i am going to attempt to put an ng tube in myself purely just to understand and answer some questions of what it's like to have an ng tube and what my son has endured for the last over 12 months and what all of these kids that have cancer or need assistance during with meds or feeding tubes bear in mind i have the worst gag reflex in the world it's something i feel passionately about to just raise awareness and actually make everybody and all the viewers understand what it's like so i can describe the feelings but i've got to get one down first so i will be answering all things ng tube in this video this week so stay tuned Welcome back to our channel, Life with the Bridges. For those who don't know us, this is me, Scott. This is my wife, Katie, and this is our son, Super Ted. We are the Bridge family, trying to get the most out of this rat race we all call life. In September 2021, we found our dreams had come true. We were expecting a new addition to the Bridge family. We spent the next nine months, like any normal parents would, preparing our life for the arrival of our new baby boy. On the 11th of May 2022, at 11.11am, we were blessed with the birth of our son. He was perfect. We instantly felt love like we'd never experienced before, and our family of four we've always dreamed of was finally complete. We had the most magical first eight months with Teddy, experienced all that life had to offer. Then, on the 24th of February 2023, our whole world got turned upside down when we got told our nine month old son had been diagnosed with high risk AML leukemia. Do not take life for granted. We spent the next six months, 184 days to be exact, at Great Ormond Street Hospital. He endured two rounds of chemotherapy, a full bone marrow transplant, in hope that this would save our son's life. It was important to us that we documented every part of his journey to raise awareness and give childhood cancer the exposure it deserves. After riding the hellish and unpredictable storm, Teddy made it to the end of his treatment and rang that bell. You are joining us now in our next chapter of this journey at home at Bridge HQ as we try to rebuild our life and continue to spread awareness about what it's like to have a child post-cancer and transplant in hope that this second chance at life we've been given is forever. So if you're interested in following our journey, don't forget to like our videos, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell as we document our life as the Bridge family. So ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. Teddy is down for a nap and I have a two hour window now where I need for myself and for you guys and everybody that subscribes to this channel and comes across this video. I need to do it for all of us because I believe that raising awareness of what it's like to have an NG tube is a huge thing for me and anybody that's watched our channel for a while now knows how much of an impact this NG tube has had on my life because of it's been my biggest fear for Teddy's NG tube to ever come out because I've really struggled to watch them have to put NG tubes back in and the pain and discomfort that it causes Teddy has really scarred me. What a f up. I'm so pissed off at myself. Look at my hands. I'm red raw and sweating. I spent the last 40 minutes trying to unblock that tube. So this is massively important for me. Do I believe I can do it? I really don't know, to be honest, because it's, again, it, it, I'm, I feel anxious just actually thinking about doing it. But if my son can go through over 16 months with a tube down his throat, then I can. And it's important for me to continue to raise awareness of what it is like. So anybody that comes across this video knows what to expect as an adult or what children have to go through with childhood cancer. So um, yeah, and anybody that's worried about me doing it safely. I have done my research. I've watched a lot of videos. I've watched it happen in the flesh quite a few times. So I'm gonna take myself hopefully through the safest route for me passing this NG tube. And I just hope for everyone's sake that I can manage to get it down. So first up, wash my hands. Okay, hands washed. Here is the tube. So just 
got a brand new tube out of the packet. First up is actually measuring the tube and where it is going to be situated in my stomach. So this is a child's tube. So this is hopefully not gonna be as bad as what I would normally have to go through because it would be a lot thicker and a lot longer. But I've roughly measured it and it will reach my stomach. This part at the bottom here is the cap where all the medicine and feed can go in. We take this to Teddy's back so it stays out of the way. But because obviously I'm using a child's tube, it's gonna hang somewhere here, which is a good thing because I'll be able to aspirate from here and be able to put some liquids also from here, so it will work. Secondly, how do we know where and how far to put this tube in? So the way that you do it is you measure from the point of your nose to your earlobe, hold there, and then it comes all the way down just to below your rib cage. And then the tube itself has numbers on it, and so that's coming out at about 58. So I've got a marker, and as you can see, on the tube, they have the little numbers. So I'm going to mark so I can see on the camera at which point this tube needs to stop at my nose. So all of this hopefully will go into my nose. I'm going to then stop when it gets to my throat here and then I'm going to be sipping water to help the swallowing process and hopefully it will go into my stomach until I reach this black line i will then stop aspirate from the tube to make sure that it is in my stomach because there is a chance that it can potentially go into my lungs if the flaps in the throat aren't necessarily closed because i will be drinking so it should all be fine but i will know if it's in my stomach from past experience with teddy it's very evident it changes your breathing pattern and i'll be able to feel it so if i've got any concerns i'm just going to pull this straight out and stop it then once i realize that NG tube is in the right position and it's aspirating from my stomach, then I know that it's in the right place in which I can then fasten it to my face, put a good old tube sticker on. Once I'm happy, I might just take a minute just to get used to it because as I said before, I've got the worst gag reflex. And so if I struggle with this, it's not going to be pretty. So here's your disclaimer. Yeah, subject to all going well, I've got a list of things that I want to understand and hopefully it will help you guys understand what the sensation feels like and what it's like to do certain things so i've got cold water warm water how it feels to rub your nose because teddy in the past has rubbed his nose and it, he's gagged um different volumes of liquid so whether five mil feels different to 40 mils worth of liquid whether it feels different if you push the liquid in fast or slowly because i've known it in the past with my son teddy if it's been pushed in too quickly, he's gagged. So I wanna know what that feels like. I wanna know what it's like moving around to so whether it moves in the stomach and makes you feel weird, whether there's a difference standing up or laying down, and lastly, eating with the tube in. So that is my intention. Those are the little tests I wanna do to kind of explain them, take you guys through them. So this bit's not gonna be pretty. I am super nervous, but I'm gonna go for it and put my big boy pants on. Yeah, this is for all the children that do it out there on a daily basis, and my son, and even you guys as adults, that potentially have to have feeding tubes. This is for you and to continue to raise awareness of what it's like and I hope this all goes well. Here goes. Good old classic teddy bear sticker. This is the bit, oh, you can see me shaking. This is the bit where I usually get really nervous because I'm actually not too bad at it now but I used to be horrendous at changing Teddy's sticker because anything to do with an NG tube, not nice. Oh, the shakes. I had butterflies in my belly all day because of doing this, but I've got to try. If Teddy's tube is going to come out in the next couple of days, I need to experience and answer these questions that I've always wanted to know. And obviously, because he's been such a young boy, he's never been able to tell me. So this is my way of giving back to him and understanding for a tiny, tiny part of what it's actually like. So the other technique they had was to wrap this around your fingers a couple of times, which will help it bend and follow the path of your throat. Okay, this is the tube that I'm gonna to use to aspirate from. And also, whilst I aspirate, I might just quickly stick this to my nose so the tube stays in the right position, and then I can stick it to my face. Right, this isn't gonna be pretty, guys, so we're just gonna go with it. May take a few attempts, but here we go. Warning, some viewers may find the following videos disturbing. Viewers discretion is advised. The following footage is not professional medical advice on how to pass an NG tube. It's merely my personal opinion and honest review to raise awareness and support childhood cancer.
So anybody that thinks they may be offended by the following footage is advised to stop watching now and click one of our other videos because we've got loads of lovely videos. Bit of lubrication. <coughs> oh, no. Oh, this is going to be really tough. Okay, what did they say? Place at the bottom of the nose, lift your head up, straighten up. Teddy Bridge, hero. Okay, maybe I need to drink more water quickly. <coughs> Flip it out. Slowly. <coughs> oh. oh, mate. I'm not even sure I'm getting, getting it past my nasal cavity. I feel like it's going in a lot, but that to there isn't a lot. I don't even think it's entered my throat yet. Oh, this is really hard. I'm gonna keep trying though. <coughs> oh my Lord. It keeps like getting coiled in my nose. I need to get this in. Oh, it's, it hurts. It really hurts. I think it's just poking me in my back of my nose. <coughs> right, I'm gonna take a couple of minutes. Okay, I think I'm there. Okay, I'm at 50. I've run out of water. Oh, f I swear. Okay, where's the black bit? Oh, there. Okay. Oh. Take this to my nose. Excuse this bit, chaps. I'm just gonna, so I can use my hands. Oh. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. So that's some of the water. So I've got 10 mil there. Okay. Oh, right. It feels weird. But I'll take you down that bit in a minute. Okay. Bring it a bit closer. Oh, it feels weird. I'm just going to go to the mirror and do this bit. Okay. So, first impressions. It feels like we've aspirated. That's clearly from my stomach. That's my stomach juice. Um, and that's all of the water I've just drank. First impressions, it feels almost like it's coiled here, but it's just that unfamiliar feeling of having something down my throat. Every, uh, <coughs> sorry. Every time 
every time you talk or swallow, it moves and hits my throat, which triggers my gag reflex. Now it's in, still trying to get used to this swallowing. So close to gagging at every moment. Now it's in, I'm gonna start doing some of these tests because I hopefully I, I don't wanna be sick and then throw it up and not get the tests done. So we have some cold water. I'm gonna quickly retest it just to make sure that it's definitely in my stomach before I start putting water in. So cap. Oh, my nose running. I've had it in for six minutes now. And I have, uh, oh. and I have to say, I was about to say, I was about to, I was slowly getting used to it. But you, you do, do kind of get used to it quite quickly. But it's the gag reflex that's doing it for me. Okay. Okay, firstly, drinking is a weird experience. You can feel it as it goes down, but I'd say ever so slightly, about three, four out of 10. I'm aware that it's there, but it's um, not awful, okay? So that's the first thing. Secondly, and so I'm gonna put in some cold liquid now, because I'm 99.9% .9 sure it's in the right place, but I'm still gonna push very slowly. Here goes. Okay, first thing I can feel is the cold temperature across my face which would instantly make a baby feel what, what on earth's going on. So far, it's just this cold sensation going in my nose, across my cheek, but I can't feel anything down my throat or in my stomach. That's cold liquid, done. So, so far, that's purely just the sensation across your cheek and your nose slightly down the back of the throat. Other than that, it's lost and gone. Warm water, again, nothing too huge, about 10 mil. It's exactly the same, but opposite. So I'm feeling the warm sensation going across my cheek, in my nose, but nothing. Okay, so in terms of warm and cold, exactly what you'd experience if you touched warm or cold. You can just feel that sensation, but it's certainly not uncomfortable, but I completely understand that it's something that would upset a baby or a child because they're unaware of that feeling going across their face and therefore don't have the ability to ask why. So that's a tick in my box of why Teddy always used to cry at the start when we put in liquid, but the warm is certainly more comfortable than the cold. Not that you can warm up meds, but room temperature water, is an absolute yes rather than cold. So my third is rubbing my nose. So Teddy always used to rub his nose and sometimes it used to make him gag. So. <coughs> oh, I can completely un uh, understand why. Because I would, I would assume the, the logic behind that is that the fact that you rub your nose and it moves the tube inside your throat and hits your gag reflex, which is exactly what's just happened. And I'm definitely not doing that again. Being tender, wiping your children's nose when they have an NG tube in is an absolute must. I've always been really, really delicate as possible when cleaning his nose, because a lot of the time they get bogeys attached to the tube, which you want to get off, because visually it's not very nice. And for him being able to breathe, it's also a necessity, but be delicate because that is super, super sensitive. Okay, another tube, fresh tube. Different volumes of liquid. So I'm gonna go for a higher volume. Obviously I've just put 10 mil in of cold liquid. Oh, um, I'm gonna try about 40 mil and see if it makes any difference. Cause sometimes again with Teddy in the, in the past, I was always worried again, getting that cold sensation. I feel it in my throat, but I was always worrying that I was ever, I was gonna to put too much in his stomach and therefore his stomach not be able to handle it and him throw up. So far, so good. Again, getting that cold sensation. The slight urge to gag, but that could just be the, that could just be the cold sensation on my throat and around my gag reflex. But so far, so good. 40 mils in and that ladies and gentlemen is how we kept Teddy hydrated throughout a lot of his treatment because it's an easy way he doesn't want to consume the liquid 
So we used to keep him hydrated by doing exactly that, topping him up. But obviously my stomach's a lot bigger than Teddy's. So we, we had to be very, very careful how much fluid we put into his stomach. But in terms of taking on the volume of fluid through the tube, no problem for an adult. Again, for children, I would imagine this will be very, very different. Okay, a big thing for me was, is there a difference between a slow push and a fast push? So we did it a couple of times where we were pushing his meds in pretty quick, um, just because of in routine and what have you. And he gagged some, some of the time and it used to be a big thing for me. I always used to push him in so slowly, but I wanted, <coughs> I wanted to, I wanted to understand whether he can feel it in his stomach, so whether it comes out the end of the NT tube and fires into the side of his stomach wall. Um, I don't know, I'll tell you. So I've obviously done everything slow so far, so I'm gonna try and push this a little bit quicker. Surprisingly not. Oh, oh. surprisingly not, I didn't, oh, could be sick, hold up. I didn't feel anything hit my stomach. I just felt the, the cold sensation come on a lot quicker and a little cold sort of like wet sensation in my throat. But <coughs> when you cough, by the way, that moves your tube and that makes you want to gag it <coughs> instantly. Okay, I'm going to take you with me. So the next one is moving around. I just want to go for a quick walk and actually understand whether I can feel it in my stomach whilst moving and so far i can't i can obviously feel it it's all here i can't feel it anywhere past here there's nothing breathing is absolutely fine because obviously in the right position but my main symptom which again in terms of discomfort is probably around about a, a three out of four out of ten it's not that bad at all but it's just this almost like a it feels like something's lodged in my throat which the tube is and this, every time you swallow it obviously knocks the tube so they're the two biggest symptoms i have i'm managing to gain control of my gag reflex and again i think over time you'd get used to it but walking seems to be absolutely fine okay the other thing i wanted to know was laying down and standing up standing up seems to be not an issue but is there a difference laying down Oh yeah, massively. Oh, maybe the tube just hits the back of your throat. That's not too bad. It's definitely, de <clears throat> definitely a different sensation for sure. Because I think the tube must rest on your throat, which therefore is another feeling that you have to get used to. It's uncomfortable. I'm not gonna lie. It is pretty uncomfortable, but it's not something that you can't necessarily get used to, but no pain whatsoever. I haven't had any pain apart from the initial putting it in my nose and it wasn't bending into my throat. Moving around, standing and laying, done. My last one, which I think could be a bit messy, is eating with it. Now this is obviously gonna take up the majority of my throat, so therefore it's gonna knock the tube into my throat, which is how I always try to make myself understand with Teddy. When it comes to him throwing up ng tube whilst eating if you have that sickness due to medication and things like that as well you can understand why these kids throw up 100 percent. it is like the whole time i'm finding myself having to control and stop myself gagging because it must just move in that th in your throat the whole time and so therefore it's just a really really tough situation you dump unnecessary liquid that you potentially don't want because you feel sick or unnecessary food um, through a tube that we don't want. You can understand why these children throw up. I'm glad I've done this. I wish I would have done it a long time ago because I can make Kate understand and myself understand what Teddy was going through. But yeah, it's tough. Right. <coughs> oh, coughing is the, <coughs> is the worst. Is the absolute... <coughs> Is the absolute worst. If you haven't followed our channel for a while, my son has had a cough pretty much since birth and it's only now that it's finally gone since having these immunoglobulin transfusions. But having a cough with this NG tube moves your NG tube so quickly and makes you gag uncontrollably. So my little boy oh, is beyond a little trooper. Oh, I don't, I'm gonna get emotional. Right, let's get this eating done and then I'm gonna put it out. 
It's just given me a whole different level of perspective of what my son and what these children do on a day-to-day -day basis by having just a feeding tube in. They are the most amazing and helpful and convenient bits of equipment when administering 31 meds a day like Teddy. It saves having to give them orally time and time and time again, but they are just so uncomfortable. And how my little boy is as amazing as he is and has been, with whilst having this feeling of discomfort constantly, 24 hours a day for 16 months, is honestly beyond me. It does make your nose run as well. <clears throat> God, just touching it. I still feel like it's coiled here. It must not be because it's in my stomach because all of that liquid's gone in and I feel fine. But it's still, the, the most unfamiliar feeling is here, nowhere near my stomach. I haven't felt anything in my stomach which is a really interesting thing because I'd assumed that even when like, aspirating in the past, Teddy's gagged and we thought it was like sucking to the inside of his stomach lining or stomach wall and we were thinking that was making him gag. But so far I haven't, I haven't had any feeling or anything in my stomach. It's all nose here, back of the throat and literally here is where I'm getting my feeling. Anyway, I'm gonna eat something and then get this tube out. No, I'm not going to cook myself anything extravagant. I'm literally going to go plain and simple with a piece of bread. I'm going to be a wuss and go with the, the soft bit in the middle and go piece by piece because if this comes up, I've eaten a lot of watermelon today and that's not going to be pretty. So here goes. Oh, instantly. The minute you swallowed that, <clears throat> oh, it feels like it's stuck. Oh, you can feel that. That is by far the worst. It's almost like it's gripping hold of the tube and going down my throat, going down my throat, that tugging on the tube. Oh, every time that bit of food goes through your mouth and here, you can see, watch, you can see it move my tube. I can feel it a lot more than it, you can see it moving. Watch this. Three, two, one. See that there? That is what it feels like. So it's obviously pushing the tube out and move, as it comes back in, it hits your gag reflex. Wow, which 100%, 100% explains why my son and all these post-transplant kids and any kids that have a feeding tube have these feeding complexes after treatment and during treatment because the feeling of eating is so uncomfortable, let alone putting the meds and the sickness and their bones and body aching and all the rest of the other symptoms that cancer brings on. Just the simple task of eating, which would normally make you feel better, normally make you feel comfortable, makes you feel so uncomfortable. I'm not even sure if that bread's gone down yet, but I need to take on a load more water and then I'll pour this tube out. But it's just given me the biggest eye-opening experience of understanding what this is actually like and it explains and answers so many questions that we've been through over the last 18 months with my son. And it's truly incredible and Yes, it's kind of made me a little bit speechless, to be honest, about, you know, like what these kids have been through. I'm just merely a healthy man with an NG tube in. Simple as that. No side effects, no other symptoms. You imagine this feeding tube on top of everything that cancer brings on. Truly mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. But I hope this has given everybody an insight into what it's like to have an NG tube. I hope I've explained it in enough detail for you guys to gain an understanding. If you're watching this video and you are about to have an NG tube, the bottom line is it is something that you will get used to. Like for me to be able to sit in front of the camera the first time in 33 years, having an NG tube into my nose, into my stomach and be able to have conversations like this, it must give you hope and must feel good purely because of the fact that I'm being normal. Is it uncomfortable? Yes, 100%. Is it painful? No, it's not painful at all. Do I think I could get used to it? Absolutely, which my son, that's just turned over to, doesn't even know is in there anymore. So all of my feelings are gonna be heightened purely because I haven't even had it in an hour and it's uncomfortable.
I'm not used to it, it's unfamiliar. Whereas if you're about to have this done and it's gonna be a long-term thing, then you will get used to it 100%. There is, <clears throat> the first time you do things, like when I laid down, it was obviously the feeling of the tube hitting my throat. It was nothing scary, it's just that unfamiliar feeling of being able to control your gag reflex. My main thing to take away is I can completely understand why my son hasn't eaten for like the last God knows how long. And he's starting to eat now, but he must be so used to having this tube in. But when we finally take it out, it could just open up a whole different world of him and his capabilities of eating. So I hope this has been interesting for everyone. And it's been certainly massively eye-opening for me. Answered a hell of a load of questions that I wanted to know for months and months and months. And if anybody that watching this video has got any questions about what it feels like, please pop them in the comments or message us over Instagram. I'm more than happy to answer any questions if you are about to have an NG tube fitted. But all in all, I can understand why it really upsets these these children because they can't communicate, they can't tell you how it feels, and they can't ask questions to why they're feeling the way they are. So yeah. Anyway. I need to get some sticker and a peel off. I might just have to be able to peel this off. Right, apparently, take a big deep breath. Move these out of the way in case I throw up everywhere. Three, two, one. <coughs> oh. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what it's like to have an NG tube. And I hope this helps people for months and years to come as it's going to be out there on YouTube for people to watch and hope they get a better perspective in terms of what their child may feel like whilst having an NG tube. And if you're about to have one fitted or the child is about to have one fitted, then those are the symptoms that, you know, you're going to go into their treatment knowing to be sensitive around the tube, that coughing makes you want to gag and throw up a lot more. Laying down for the first couple of times is a weird feeling, but okay after. Moving around, fine. Um, different volumes of liquid. Again, it's all relative to, you know, how big their stomach is, but also fine. Pushing fast or slow, you know, I would always push slow purely because it's within the best interest of your child. You don't want it for them to ever get any more feelings or symptoms than they're already experiencing. Warm and cold water, always go for room temperature water purely because it's less sensation going across their face and then there'll be less confusion. And eating, don't be surprised if they don't eat or don't want to eat because it's a weird, weird sensation. Very, very, very weird. So, but that is me wrapped up here. I am now NG tubeless and uh, put it this way. I cannot wait to get my son's NG tube out because he has been an absolute hero and deserves a tube free face and to open up another door into his future in terms of eating and looking like a normal cancer free child. Roll on getting his tube out. That brings this video to a close. I apologise greatly if any of this footage was upsetting. But as always, my main purpose of this channel is to raise awareness and give childhood cancer the exposure it deserves. So ladies and gentlemen, share this video far and wide to help raise that awareness. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. A huge thank you to all of our Bridge family members and remember, live for today as tomorrow is never promised. And come back for our next video when we finally remove his tube.